Morning, son. Ken's on. You were the fucker. Knocked you all out this morning. Anything doing? Emergency on the way. Left any milk? Not today. Better bring another bottle of night then. Sure turn. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, Ted. Morning, miss. Sorry, you know, it's a long day. Still, pity to waste it. My name's Miller. What's yours? Joan. Joan Ship. Surgical medical or maternity? I don't know yet. I'm only probation. Oh. Assignments to the following nurses. Nurse Kappa to go to casualty. Nurse Wright to Jenna Ward. Nurse Shepherd to Lister Ward. You mean surgical? That's my ward. Come on, Dad. Wake up. Medicine time. Oh, ain't there any peace around here? I've only just got to sleep. Get away with you. You've been snoring all night. No, not me. It's him. He kept me awake all night. Now, come on. Drink this. Oh, oh sorry. I don't want that. It's going to be much worse if you make a fuss. Oh, it's all right for you. You don't know how to drink it. Now, don't be such a baby. You've had it before. Well, that's the trouble. It don't do me no good anyway. I say, you're feeling all right. You look awful. Yes, thanks. I'm a bit scared. It's rather like being a new girl at school all over again. <laughs> yes, I know. I was always sick my first day of term. Matron got so used to it, she gave me a base and stayed to bed with me. Anyway, I'm glad I'm starting the surgical. It's okay if you've got the stomach for it. Oh, hello, darling. About time. We're all clear this side, but there's a casualty coming up. Fisher's gone for the bottles. Oh, what is it? It's a road accident. They're operating now. We'll need a blood transfusion stand, too. Right. Look, try and get your nurses in on time. It's a bit hard on the night stuff. Come on now, no heel tapping, drink it up. Hello, hello. Be seeing you. Miller, you're late. It's the second time this month. What's your name? Joan. Joan Shepherd. You're the new probationer, I suppose. Yes, staff. Right, Miller, get on with the medicines. And Shepherd, let's see if you know how to make an operation bed. And in future, I see to it that you're in the ward at eight sharp. Thank you, Fisher. We know now. It's all right. You haven't done anything wrong yet. It was hopeless. You did everything you could. All right, Miller, you can take that down again. We won't need it. And get this trolley moved out of the way. These sheets don't look at all clean. You better send them back to the laundry. Well, really. Anything worth reading in The Lancet this week, old man? Mm-hmm. Aren't they ever going to print those results of yours, Mariner? Mm-hmm. By the way, the case came in yesterday, would have interested you. Septicemia. I doubt it. Well, surely you're working on septicemia, aren't you? On cases that resist penicillin, about one in every thousand. There should be one in a thousand chance I'd be interested. Hmm. What made you choose, well, such a narrow field? Well, if you really want to know, Cook, read this. These are my first results. Good heavens. Morning. Morning. 
we have bacon and eggs this morning, Dr. Dean? Oh, no, no, thank you. Just some coffee, black and strong, please. And for you, sir? Bacon and eggs, please. Anything wrong, Sophie? Looks as if your favorite gastrectomy had just expired on the table. We had an emergency. Mac gave the anesthetic and I operated. How did it go? He died. What? On the table? There was no chance for him. If you couldn't save him, darling, nobody else could. Would have to happen when that brilliant young house surgeon of ours was away on one of his weekends. I'll get that stuff for you, sir. Jump a second. Daddy, do you think he'll get that appointment? He's well in the running. After all, the grooms have been associated with this hospital for years. The old man has a very fine reputation. That should count for a lot. Here we are, sir. Loaded with vitamins and proteins. One tablespoonful after meals and you'll be walking on air. Thank you, Dick. Darling, don't forget Thursday afternoon. That house is just the right size for us. All right, darling, I'll fix it somehow. Thank you so much for the weekend. Not at all. Come again. Cheer. The whole room smells of this linseed. So I say to him, if you must make a poultice, this is not the room to do it. And what do I find? He's oiling his cricket stick. Bat, sir, if you please. Oh, very well. A country gentleman, that's what he's fit for. Hello. Oh, Black Monday. The place reeks of it. What's the matter? I had a post-mortem or something? I've got an experiment cooking up in the lab, so come up when you can. I'll try. I say, Sophie. Yes? How would you like me to take over outpatients for you on Thursday morning? Thursday? Yes, Margie wants to have a look at Dr. Painter's house. Now, I'll take over your outpatients if you give my father a hand in the theatre in the afternoon. No, oh, I'll do it, I suppose. Oh, thanks, Sophie. That's great. Mariner's after that, isn't he? Mariner? Is he? Well, they were talking about it last night. Perhaps he wants to get married himself. If you're interested, why don't you ask him? There was I waiting at the church, waiting at the church. Thumb, pom pom, he left me Millie. in the lurch. Yes? How long before we do some real nursing? Oh, you wait, they've been washing bottles for six months. You know, I put cold cream on them every night, but the water's so hard, it just doesn't give a girl a chance. And what the suet puddings do to your figure. Anyway, if you do take a bit of trouble with your appearances, no one to notice. There are the doctors, aren't they? Don't talk to me about doctors. The only time I ever meet a doctor, I'm carrying a bedpan. I say, why is those clock so beastly? She's got a lot on her mind at the moment. Posted Dick Groom. She's put in for theatre sister's job. Good riddance if she gets it. Are they engaged or anything? If by anything you mean fun and games, yes. But they're not engaged. Our Dr. Groom's after big again at Dolly Clark. Now then, you do. It's time you had all that finished. Good morning. Oh, good morning, madam. Uh, would it be possible to see a doctor? My little boy's hurt his hand. Oh, too bad. A casualty, eh? Well, madam, if you'll take a seat in the outpatients, the sister will look after you. Oh, thank you very much. Do you think it'll be long? Oh, come on, Tommy, don't be a nuisance. Good morning. Good morning, sir. What can we do for you? <laughs> well, it, it's my back, you know. In the olden days, we used to call it lumbago. Now, slip discs is all the rage. Now, I, I would like to see a doctor. Have you a card, sir? Card? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, yes, I hope so. Yes, here we are. No, sir, not one of them. Health card I was after. Health card? This is all rather new to me. I've only just got back home. What sort of card's that? Well, sir, it's a card that shows you on the patient's list of one of the local doctors. And I'm afraid we can't treat you until you've got one. Oh, dear, it's all very complicated, isn't it? Well, how do I get one? Well, sir, if I was you, I'd go to the post office. They'll give you a list of the local doctors, and all you've got to do is take your pick. Post office? Extraordinary thing. Now, suppose I was dying, what would you do? Ah, you'd be a casualty, an emergency. Different category altogether, you see, sir. You'd get immediate treatment. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that. Well, thank you very much for all you've done. What's up with you, Cock? Nothing. Oh, I get it. Bringing your ma along, eh? No, not really. Why don't you tell the gentleman, Tommy? There's nothing to be ashamed of in having a bad hand. You can't be too careful with that sort of thing, you know. Exactly. You see, Tommy? Doesn't matter now. Too late anyway. Would you missed an outing, have you? 
Yeah, we're going fishing. We had a real rod. We might have caught anything. You like fishing, do you? Never tried, really. Not with a real rod. That's what makes it so rotten. Oh, I know how you feel, chum. Almost as bad as losing a real whopper when you've hooked it. Have you ever hooked any whoppers? Well, I have in my time. I caught a 300-pound sailfish once. Blimey, what a thrill that was. A sailfish? Only eels around here. Where'd you catch this one? Pacific. Took me all day to land the beastie thing. Pacific? I bet you're a sailor. That's it. Well, anyway, this boy I was telling you about, he gets his blister on his eel, see? And do you know, he was gone in 48 hours. It's them utility socks I've always said cheap, that's what. Especially the dye. Well, you damn wash your uglies in them now, dare you? No, I suppose not. So there we were in the boats. Daughter. Doctor, we'll see you now, Mrs. Briggs. Oh, thank you, sister. Come along, Tommy. Well, then what happened? I'll tell you next time. What do you mind me next time? Oh, it takes too long to tell, chum. You were picked up, weren't you? Yes, we were picked up. Oh, good, I'm glad. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Mrs. Briggs and Tommy Briggs, Dr. Dean. Thank you, sister. Good morning, Mrs. Briggs. Good morning. Sit down, won't you? Oh, thank you, doctor. Well, Tommy, I can see that you're the patient. What have you been up to, eh? Given it slipped and went into my hand, doctor. Oh, what bad luck. Did it hurt a lot? No, not much, really. Well, let's have a look at it, shall we? When did this happen, Mrs. Briggs? When was it, Tommy? Uh, last Friday, wasn't it? Mm, yes. About two days ago? Yes. I thought it looked a bit angry. That's why I brought him along. I'm very glad you did. No cheating now. You keep that under your tongue. What did you do for the hair, Mrs. Briggs? Well, I didn't find out till the evening, and then I put a wet compress on it. Yes, I see. Throbbing a little, isn't it? Oh, a bit. I'm just going to feel in here. That hurt too? A bit. Hardly at all, really. Mrs. Briggs, I suggest keeping Tommy here for a couple of days. There's a certain amount of infection in that hand. It's beginning to spread a little. I had no idea it was anything serious. Oh, I didn't say it was. It's simply with any kind of infection, one can't be too careful. I just want to see that Tommy is kept quiet for the next day or so, that's all. Now I'll miss the circus as well. Miller, will you two make up that bed again, please? Just the bed this time, Staff? Yes. And get a trousers, pajamas and dressing gowns from the St. Christopher Ward. All my swaps in that big tin of Macintosh's toffee. Hundred I haven't even looked at yet. Yeah? And my album. My album's on the bottom shelf next to all the Biggles books, I think. All right, darling. Now, is there anything else, do you think? No, thanks. Well, I'll go back and look them out right away. Thanks. Oh, Mummy. Yes, darling? You will come this afternoon, won't you? Of course I will. That's our resident Romeo. I don't see you've fallen for him. Of course not. He hasn't even noticed me. No, I bet he noticed your legs, though. He can tell the difference between the real thing and forces a mile off. Miller, I want you to help me with Mr. Brown's dressing. And Shepard, see that this young man gets into bed, will you? Hello? Hello? What's your name? Briggs. Do you want me to call you Briggs rather than your first name? You can call me Tommy if you want to. Mine's Joan. I'm supposed to see that you get into bed. Oh, do I have to? It seems so silly when you feel perfectly all right. I know, but I'll get in a row if you don't. I'm new here, you see. This is my first day. All right. Do I undress here in front of all these people? Oh, yes, I think so. I shouldn't worry about it. No one will notice. Well, I'm not worried. It's just that I've got a rabbit. A rabbit? Yes. Not on you. Yes. It's only a baby. I haven't told my mother yet. She mightn't have liked it in the house. We can't keep it in the ward, can we? Can't we? Oh. Do you think you could look after it for me, just till I leave? It'll be a bit difficult here, but I'll try. Gosh, thanks. Her name's Belinda. She doesn't need any water, only lettuce leaves and a carrot now and then. Oh, isn't she a darling? Look, if I try and do this for you, will you promise to be in bed when I come back? Yes. Right. 
Now. Better go now before I'm spotted. Gosh, thanks. You're a sport. Operator, would you get me 6250, please? Thank you. I'm afraid I'll have to use sixpence. I've run out of coppers. Hello. Hello. Could I speak to Dr. Peter's secretary, please? Thank you. Oh, good morning. I'm having trouble with my back. Oh, no, no. I'm a new patient. Yes, I'm just visiting. Well, he's leaving the district. Well, can't he see him before he goes? I don't know, the only way to get treatment here is to be run over. If you brought your shaving things, I suppose you would have camped out for the night. You speak it to me, madam. Now, here's an interesting case, Cook. An old rheumatic endocarditis, mitral stenosis, hypertrophy of the right side leading on to dilatation, and now auricular fibrillation. A child couldn't miss it. A classical case, in fact. Well, how are you feeling this morning, my dear? It's my heart, Doctor. Sometimes it feels for all the world like a little bird trying to fly away. <laughs> we won't let it do that just yet, my dear. What you want is a little more foxglove tea to keep it quiet. Thank you, Doctor. See to that, will you cook? A little more foxglove tea. Tincture of digitalis. Mm. I think foxglove tea will cheer her up rather more than tincture of digitalis. You know, the patients aren't just raw material for us to practice on. Do you remember what Voltaire said, Cook? No, sir. He said a physician is a man who pours drugs of which he knows little into bodies of which he knows less. The drugs are no answer to bad housing and overwork. With rest and proper treatment, that woman might have had a chance 20 years ago. There were six kids to bring up and no health service to pay for her convalescent home. By the way, did Mariner send a report on that test meal? No, sir, he didn't. Shall I send a nurse for it? No, there are one or two things I want to discuss with him. I'll go up and see him myself. Hello, sir. Uh-huh. Neil, what about the report on that test meal I asked you to do for me? Well, didn't you get it, sir? No, I did not. I marked it urgent. Should have come down two days ago. Well, I sent it down. I swear I did. Oh, you better look round for it. A couple of your analyses, gland section for groom, blood count for gender war. Another your analysis. I'm sure it went down to the wards again. Those analyses lose everything. It's probably the... I'm, ter I'm terribly sorry, sir. I don't know how I came to forget it. You haven't even done it. This isn't good enough, Neil. I know what this research means to you and what it may achieve. But routine hospital work must come first. Yes, I know, but... Certainly you're getting some results now. Well, that's another thing. You're not doing yourself any good up here absorbing all these gamma rays. Well, it's the gamma rays that make the new dope so active. Maybe, but you can't persuade me you're taking the proper precautions. London was different. You had proper apparatus. Yes, I didn't have the freedom I have here. How much do you reckon it would cost to buy what you need? Oh, a new Geiger counter, about 50 quid. Lead bricks, 25. Proper ventilating system. Oh, so you might as well be five million. Well, I'm going to bring it up with the management committee anyway. Management committee. Well, now the next item on the agenda is um, ah yes, a message to Dr. Madden on a very brilliant research paper in the Lancet called. Um, well, we'll take the title as read. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think we shall have any disagreement here. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chairman, congratulations are all very well. But I feel that I should point out that Dr. Mariner is laboring under conditions which can only be described as primitive. Well, what's that? Primitive, sir. Particularly in regard to apparatus. In my young days, necessity used to be the mother of invention. Very possibly. But the material that Dr. Mariner uses in his experiments comes from an atomic energy plant. It produces rays that kill. Well, couldn't he use something else? Gamma rays can come from no other source. Mr. Chairman, I'm asking for money not to buy 
flasks and test tubes, but human lives. Furthermore, I think we should all realize that this is costing Dr. Mariner his health. Can we allow him to endanger himself in this way for a matter of 200 pounds? 200 pounds? Hmm. Well, the money could only come from the General Purposes Fund, and there's little enough to spare. We had hoped to equip a recreation room for the nurses. This seems to be a choice between ping-pong bats and saving lives. It isn't as simple as that. Yeomans isn't the most comfortable hospital, and we've got to do something for the staff. And I think I should point out, they save lives too, Dr. Shoesmith. Don't you agree, Mr. Groom? I'd be more willing to support you, Shoe Smith, if Mariner's work was less specialised. Specialised or not, its purpose is to save lives. And if you, Groom, had septicemia or any infection resistant to penicillin or similar preparation, there is nothing that could save you but this stuff which Mariner's trying to perfect. And you talk of specialisation. I'm afraid, Dr. Shoe Smith, that all we can do is to refer the matter to the Finance Subcommittee. Is that approved? Dr. Shoesmith. Mr. Chairman, I know it's not for me to quarrel with the decision of this committee, but I have a request to make. Have I your permission to put it to the committee? Well, certainly. Will you all please find time to visit Dr. Mariner in his laboratory? He will explain to you what he's trying to do, and you'll be able to judge for yourselves the risks he is running and the value of his work. I see no objection. I don't know that I can come myself. I think it's up to individual members to decide for themselves. Well, for those who can, shall we say tomorrow. Her name is Belinda, sir. I've been all over the hospital trying to find a home for her. I even asked the cook if she'd help, but she wouldn't. She probably had designs on her. I'm awfully grateful to you, sir, for helping me out. I'll go and tell Tommy she's all right. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Not at all. Be company for me. Nice change after the white mice. You won't treat her like the mice, so will you? I mean, for experiments or anything. I'll treat her with the greatest respect, I promise you. Hello, darling. Neil, what's all this I heard this morning about your being interested in Painter's house? Oh, yes. I saw him last night. He told me his house was to let, so I asked him to give me the first refusal on it. Bit of luck, don't you think? So that's fine. Well, I do think you might have told me. Yes, I was going to, but you were a bit upset this morning, weren't you? Aren't you taking it rather for granted that I want to settle down here? Why? Well, we've discussed all that. I thought you decided. Yes, I thought I had until... Well, yesterday, McKendrick offered me a job as his assistant. He's starting a new orthopedic unit in London. It's a wonderful opportunity. It might lead to almost anything. Oh, darling, I've always said it was a pity to bury ourselves in the country. There's nothing like the scope down here, and with your qualifications, you could get any job you wanted. Neil, let's both go back to London. Well, I thought of going to London, of course. There aren't the facilities here, and never will be. But Yarman has one great advantage. I may have a lot of routine work, but at least I'm my own master. What about the work I want to do? Am I to give that up? Well, you stand a very good chance of getting Max's job when he leaves next month. But I don't want to be registrar in a country hospital. You talk as if the only people worth curing were in London. Plenty of work to be done here, heaven knows. Oh, Sophie. Then let's hurt each other more than we need. I just can't imagine life at humans without you. I know what your work means to you, and if you've got to go to London, I can't stop you. You're not being much help to me, are you? Well, darling, how can I help you? You feel you're sacrificing your career? I shan't try and persuade you to stay. How can you stand there and be so detached? As if this were another of your experiments. Well, standing in the way of someone's career is no great basis for marriage, is it? Oh, darling, I don't know what to do. Well, come and have a cup of tea. Well, now, our last business is the appointment of a resident surgical officer to replace Dr. Macusick. I propose Dr. Sophie Dean for the post. 
I'm not so sure about that. I second Dr. Shoesmith. Surely we need go no further than Dr. Dean. The staff speak most highly of her work. I understand that your boy is thinking of settling here, Mr. Groom. I prefer him for the job. Matron. Would you like to see young Groom get the post? I should not. He's much too free and easy with the nursing staff. Well, if you agree, I think the fairest thing is that the post be advertised. And that'll conclude the business for today. Oh, but does that mean that Dr. Dean and young Dr. Groom are to be passed over? No, ma'am, it does not mean that. They are free to apply like anyone else. Well, I've been here long enough drinking that white mixture and you taking photos of me in it. I'm not having no operation and that's final. But, Peddler, Mr. Groom knows what's best for you. Maybe he does. But what's mine is mine to do what I like with, not what Dr. Groom likes. I want to go back to the farm where I belong. After all, it's my stomach, ain't it? OK, no one's going to take it away from me if you want to keep it. But have a word with Mr. Groom before you decide, eh? Waste of time. I've made up my mind. All right, Peddler. Yes, we're leaving for the boss to see. All right. There's nothing else very serious except that burnt face in the corner over there. Crash certainly made a mess of him. Yes, well, I'll have a look at him when you do the dressings. Right. Tea, Mr. Purchase. Oh. I'm afraid I may make a mess of it. I've never fed anybody through one of these things before. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll manage. <coughs> I'll take it easy, kid. Don't choke me. I don't pour it down the throat either. I'm sorry. Sorry. Is it better? I'll wipe my mouth, will you, please? You'll find a swab down there. Thank you. What's your name? Joan Shepherd. But I don't know that I'm allowed to tell you. I remember that. I know you all by your voices. The one who bullies you all is Nurse Clark, isn't it? Yes, I heard her telling you off this morning. And you... You've got a funny little way of talking to yourself as if you were too frightened to open your mouth. Would you like a little more? You haven't quite finished it. No, thanks. I've had enough. And Nurse, could you make it a little stronger next time? Not quite so much sugar. Yes, I remember. Thank you. Now, Nurse, there's no time to gossip with the patients. Go and see if you can help Dr. Mariner with Tommy. Now, this won't hurt much. It's only a little jam. I bet it won't hurt as much as when I jab myself with a gimlet, though. No, no, I feel this. Excuse me, sir. Nurse Clark told me to ask if there was anything you want. No, thanks, nurse. Oh, hello. You'll be pleased to hear that Belinda has eaten a huge lunch and is very comfortably settled. Oh, good. <laughs> How long have you been here, nurse? She's new. This is her first day, and she's jolly nice, too. Oh, I bet she is. All right, nurse. And jolly good luck. Thank you, sir. No. You ready? What are you going to do now? Watch. Can I spare all that? Yes, I think so. If you were a millionaire, I'd have taken about a penny from you. You're going to put it in the blood bank? What, a penny worth? No. Well, what are you going to do with it then? When you jabbed yourself with that gimlet, a lot of germs got inside you. But didn't they get in all over again when you pricked me with that? Now, that wasn't dirty, but I bet your old gimlet was filthy. Well, it was a bit. Well, the dirt on that gimlet started quite a battle in you, too. In me? Yes. You see, there are things in your blood which fight the germs, a whole army of them. So what I'm trying to do is to see whether you've got enough to get you well quickly. Hello, Sonny. What have you been doing to yourself? Gimlet slipped when I was making a propeller. And that let in a lot of germs, and now I'm killing them inside me. Hmm. Well, carry on with the good work. Has he had his penicillin yet? Yes, sir, now I go. Good. Careful. Well, so long, young fella. Goodbye. Now, I'm going to catch one or two of those germs and see what they are so that we can kill them off even quicker. There we are.
morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power. Grant this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance. Hot water bottles and blankets, please, nurse. Quick. Now, don't be frightened, Tommy. We'll make you comfortable in no time. I'm sorry, sister. I can't seem to stop it. Now, don't you worry, sonny. Now, snuggle down. And you go. We'll get you nice and cozy. Sister, some good swaps fell on the floor. Could someone pick them up, please? I'll get them for you, Tommy. I'll be very careful not to spoil them. You are collected, too. No, but my brother is. I'll get him to send you some. Thanks. Oh, this looks a valuable one. Nyasaland. I don't think it is, but it might be one day. Well, I hope so. There you are, they're all safely back in the box now. Nurse. Go and phone Mr. Groom. Yes, sister. Neil? Hello, what's up? I've just seen Shoesmith. Sophie, have you written to McHenry yet? Yes. Have you posted it? No. But don't let's go into that now. Are you I... going to post it? Yes. That's really goodbye. No. Well, at least only temporarily. Five years isn't my idea of temporal. Oh, no, darling, don't let's go into all that now. Shoesmith's in a panic. The committee are coming at 12 instead of 3, and he wants to know if you're going to be ready to put on some kind of a show for them. Oh, I suppose so. Well, that's a fine constructive attitude to take, I must say. Here you have a chance of convincing these people and getting some money out of them, and what do you do? Get all high hat Look, Sophie, I've had all this out with them before. Peddling research to hospital committees is about as profitable as selling vacuum cleaners. Well, I must say, Neil, if I was on the hospital committee and I came into your lab and found somebody taking this smug, standoffish attitude, I wouldn't vote you a penny. Thanks very much. Fred? Yes, sir? We are the hospital committee. Uh, if you wanted to make a good impression, what would you show us? That's a good one, sir. Well, there's always the centrifuge. Ah, yes, the centrifuge. Pretty, isn't it? Of course, there are the white mice. On second thoughts, no, they might frighten Miss Farmer. How about the Geiger counter? Mm. Hmm? Oh, Neil, do stop fooling. All Shoesmith wanted is for you to explain in simple language what you're trying to do. Well, it's easier said than done. Can you see me lecturing Brewster on penicillin-resistant bacteria? Probably thinks bacteria is an island in the Pacific. Oh, Hello? Oh, yes, sir. It's groom about Tommy Briggs. A rigor. Then the infection's spreading. Yes, it should have taken effect by now. Oh, well, it sounds like it, I'm afraid. Yes, I took a swab from the wound yesterday, but I haven't identified the infection yet. The culture tests aren't through. Yes, as fast as I can. Well, that doesn't sound too good, does it? Penicillin resistant? Yes. If only we were six months further ahead. Hello, sir. Got your card? Never mind about the card. A nice song and dance you've led me. It's not as easy as you said. It's not a question of my picking any doctor I want. I can't get any doctor to see me at all. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. It must be this new factory. It's brought a lot of new workers into the town. But I'm not concerned with the factory. It, 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 it's my lumbago that I'm concerned about. What about that? I've got it, sir. Why don't you go and see the almoner? I'm sick and tired of trying to see people. Now you, you see if you can fix it up for me. Yeah, my province, really, sir. But I'll see what I can do for you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. I'm sorry, sir, but I don't want to go through with it. I want to go back where I belong. I'm good for a bit yet, and, and there's too much work to be done on the farm. I don't care, Of course, it's your stomach. You can do what you like with it. Thank you, sir. Tell me, how many times have you been back here? I don't rightly know, sir. Well, I'll tell you. Three. And each time, it's the same old story. You can't carry on with your work. But this time, it's different. That ulcer's getting bigger, you know. Come on, now. Let's get you right once and for all. You're no good as you are, and you know it. 
I'd like the missus to be here. So she shall. We'll tell her to come in tomorrow. Good night, peddler. Now, let's get him to sign a consent form before he changes his mind. Yes, Mr. Crow. And where are you going to get that blood for Tommy Briggs, sir? Oh, yes, yes. Let's have a form. You won't be assisting me tomorrow, I gather. Uh, no, but I explained to you that I'd arranged for Dr. Dean to help in the theatre. Oh, yes, yes. You're taking Marjorie Brewster to look at Dr. Painter's house? Uh, yes. I'll be very glad to see you and Marjorie settled. Uh, thanks. Well, there we are, nurse. That's what you asked for. Thank you, Doctor. Send it to Dr. Mariners right away. Yes, sir. So that's what you're up to. There are times, Dick Groom, and I despise you. For heaven's sake, darling, you can't make a scene here. Oh, can't I? Just you wait and see. It's just a baby in our office. We'll lose us both our jobs. Your precious job and your rich wife, that's all you think about, isn't it? I'm not going to talk about it here. I'll come up and explain later. Your father did all the explaining. I'll see you after lunch. looking up. Any luck, sir? Well, anyway, we're on the right track. I've just seen the arm, a very helpful woman, by the way, and she says that I must see Dr. Um, Shusen, is it? Yes, sir. Yes, I, I rang him up. Of course, I didn't get anywhere, but now I've got a little pull. So all I've got to do is to get Dr. Shusen at the side list now. Could I see him, please? I'm terribly sorry, sir. Just now he's with the board. Board? I'm sick of boards. We're stiff with them. <laughs> I do think it's all so interesting. Taking the bugs for a ride, eh? Mm. How cosy. You've got a radio here as well. It looks like one, Miss Farmer, but it isn't. It's a Geiger counter. Oh, yes, I've heard of them. Saves you doing all those boring sums, doesn't it? Well, actually, it um, measures the radiation level in the laboratory. Oh. It's quite simple, really. I'll show you. You see, some of the substances I use emit harmful rays. The Geiger counter detects them. Well, do let me hold it for you. All right. Now, you take that, Mr. Sawyer. If you'll stand further off, you'll see the effect of this better. Now, this substance is radioactive. Oh, I must tell you, sorry. Oh, I, I do hope it isn't anything that matters. So do I. Don't worry, Miss Farmer. Fortunately, it was all right. If it had been one of Tommy Briggs's plates, it would have been another matter. Who is Tommy Briggs? He's a little boy. He's one of those cases that Mr. Groom would say was over-specialized. He has blood poisoning. It's resistant to penicillin. We may be able to do very little for him. That is where Dr. Mariner's research comes in. But what are these plates to do with the child? They're used for testing new drugs, sir. Can you show us how? Certainly. Oh, uh, would you mind bunching yourselves around here? Miss Farmer, it might be safer if you were to remove your fur. Oh, I don't want those tails getting out of control. Certainly, of course. Now, um, here, I've taken the blood from a septicemia case and covered the jelly in the dish. Those streaks are germ colonies growing. Um, in this one, I've added penicillin here. And this clear circle shows where it spread out and prevented the germs from growing. But what about the other circles? Are they um, other drugs? Yes, uh, yes, that's it exactly. Oh, I, I do think it would be so interesting to see Tommy Briggs's plate. Very well. There are no clear patches on that one. Haven't you tried any drugs on it yet? That's just it, Miss Farmer. I've tried all the possible preparations on this plate, and as you can see, they've had no effect at all. I'm exactly where I started. Then your drugs are no use to Tommy Briggs. Not even penicillin. Not even penicillin. Well, then there's no hope for cases of this sort. 
once the infection has really got hold of a patient. And uh, Mr. Brewster, that is what Dr. Mariner is trying to prevent happening in future. Can you give us an idea of what this research work of yours is about? Yes, certainly, sir. If, if you wouldn't mind moving down here again. What I'm trying to do is to take one of those drugs, one of the ones that won't work on Tommy Briggs, and bombard it with gamma rays from this lump of radioactive cobalt. That's the cobalt, and this is the drug being bombarded by the gamma rays. Oh. What I'm hoping will happen is that the rays will change the drug chemically, give it a tremendous shaking up so as to make it more powerful. In other words, uh, change the whole structure of the thing. Well, I should have thought it was better to use the rays to bombard the bugs. It would. They'd certainly kill the bugs. Trouble is, they might kill the patients as well. That is why protection in this laboratory is so important. When will you know whether you've succeeded or not? Well, I've had promising results already. Yes, we read your article in The Lancet. But this boy, Tommy Briggs, uh, what can your research work do for him? Well, I've infected this new plate with Tommy's bug. At the same time, I've added some of my latest preparation here at the top. Now, what I'm hoping will happen is that though the bug will grow on the rest of the plate, this area will be clear. That at least will show that the new material is potent. Whether it's safe to use on human beings or not, is another matter. Yes, I can see this is most important. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, Miss Farmer and Mr. Sawyer, but I'd like to raise this matter again in committee. I agree, Mr. Brewster. I think it's all so interesting. Such enthusiasm is most inspiring. Now, I need hardly ask you, Shoesmith. Uh, Sawyer. Well, the nurses are going to miss their recreation room, but... Yes, I'll support you, Dr. Maron. Sorry I'm late, but you know what it's like, especially after lunch. Yes, I know. We'll be all right in here. Well, is this to Abbott's office? You needn't worry about that. Oh, an awful row if you found him here. So all you think about, isn't it? Didn't think about it last winter, did you? <laughs> then we were only making tea. It couldn't be discussed this summer else. Oh, don't worry, we won't be disturbed. Sister Abbott has a meeting till three o'clock. Oh, Dolly, you're taking this all much too seriously. Oh, no. But I'm not going to be taken for granted any longer. Well, you look wonderful when you're angry. Does Marjorie look wonderful when she's angry, too? I don't think I could ever be in love with Marjorie as I loved you. That's why you're buying a house to settle down with her. Oh, you needn't try and explain. Of course you want to marry Marjorie. You want the job. And you want a rich wife to go with it. But how do you think I feel? <laughs> Tony, I'm terribly sorry. I... If I'd ever known that you'd really cared, none of this would ever have happened. You see, it's like this. There comes a time in a chap's life when he feels he wants to settle down, get a home and, well, have kids. Oh, I know we've had fun together, but, well, that was different, wasn't it? Different? You think I don't want kids? I suppose you think I'm just a career girl. I want to spend the rest of my life bossing nurses around in a hospital ward. Or perhaps you think I'm just a good time girl good enough for an evening out, and that's all. Well, let me explain to you once and for all, Dick Groom. Yes, I... Clark. I think you'd better do the explaining to me. He's certainly giving Miller the one silver. What's your girl want with you, Clark? Oh, probably a cigarette end in my bedroom, I suppose. Hmm. Well, I'm asking for a transfer for maternity. Might as well keep rabbits and have done with it. Nurse, I'm sending you for three months to help Sister Gator in the outpatients. Outpatients? But I 
I've put in for the job of theatre sister matron. That matter was discussed by the management committee yesterday. Your name was brought forward, but I hardly felt able to recommend you. Then I'm to be passed over? In view of what happened this afternoon, nurse, I feel I was entirely justified. But I... I don't propose to discuss your behaviour any further. You have no right to interfere with my private life. Why don't you tell the truth? You don't approve of nurses being friendly with the doctors. Not when they're on duty. You seem to expect us to behave like machines. We're human, aren't we? I suppose you want us all to grow into frustrated old spinsters. I'm sorry, mate. I think that will do, Nurse Clark. Come in. Yes, I've tried the path lab. But Dr. Mariner said they left half an hour ago. What? Thank you. Well? I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm afraid we've missed him. Dr. Shoesmith left a half an hour ago, sir. Oh, blast! You might take it round to his house, sir. You're looking very glamorous this evening. I've been to the party at Shoesmith's. I saw the light burning in your window. Apart from messing about with test meals and things, darling, did you remember to have anything to eat? Yes, I think so. But Dr. Kildare labors on, sacrificing his romantic dreams to science. Oh, darling, you're taking too much out of yourself. When I become luminous and glow in the dark, you'll know there's something really wrong. <laughs> You'd have been proud of me this morning. I put up quite a good show for the committee. Must have worked anyway, because they're going to give me a new laboratory. Oh, Neil, is that true? Well, a slight exaggeration, perhaps, but they did seem sympathetic. Just shows what one can rise to, even in a country hospital. Well, on the contrary, it shows what you can do when you're being badgered by the right woman. Yeah. Well, that's that. Don't look so serious, darling. Even if you have sent off the application to old mechanic Boston. Neil, you do understand, don't you? I'm not a careerist, really. I'm not. I, I'd like to do some good in this world if I can, but I'd much rather you were the big success. I just hate to see you being wasted. Yes, I understand, of course. I must plot this blood count. It's a pretty low one, isn't it? Is it Tommy Briggs? Mm. It's the worst of working in casualty. One can never follow a case through. How is he today? Not too good, I'm afraid. Groom opened the hand this afternoon, but I don't think it'll help much. He's ordered a blood transfusion. Well, I should hope so. Judging by that count, he needs one. What's all the mystery? Neil, what does this mean? Why is your name there? Well, it's a routine test. I check my blood count every week. Routine. What's the use of checking it and doing nothing about it? Well, don't worry, darling. I know what I'm doing, honestly. Yes, and you know perfectly well that if you carry on at this rate, you won't stand a chance yourself. Then all your work will be wasted. Well, it's only a matter of weeks now. When the results on the animals come through, I'll take a week or two off. In the meantime, this much is in black and white. Yes, it should read well in the obituary columns. Oh, it's all very well getting oneself steamed up over one's work, forgetting everything for it, even one's health. But taken to extremes is just sheer lunacy. Oh, darling, can't you see you're running yourself to death? Darling. You make me sound quite heroic. And rather romantic. Oh. <laughs> That's the new dove cooking, or rather it's cooked. Look, I'll just fish it out and be right down. Promise. Right way. Uh, yes, yeah, straight through. See it in your left, Madam. Hello. 
Had a bit of luck last night, broke my ankle. That gets me in the right category, doesn't it? At last. Ah, oh, nurse, we haven't much time this morning. I want to be away by half past twelve if I can, so make it snappy, will you? Good heavens, Dolly, what on earth are you doing here? You lost me my job upstairs yesterday, that's all. Oh, now, look here, Dolly. Please, I don't want any more explanations. Yesterday was quite enough, thank you. I'll get the patient. Neil, it works. Well, you can't quarrel with that result. Yes, it works on the Petri dish. I'd be most aggrieved if it didn't. Well, why aren't you more cheerful about it? If I'd done something like that, I'd have been walking on air. Now you can use it on Tommy. No, I can't. But this proves that your drug kills the bug in that child's blood. What more do you want? Plenty. Look, up to now, when I've tried it on animals, perfectly healthy animals, it sometimes killed them. Mm -hmm. You see these ten mice? Yeah. I've given them each a shot of my latest brew. If it doesn't kill nearly half of them, I should be very surprised. But what about the other half? I mean, is there something different about their blood? What's the answer, Neil? I don't know. In this job, there are no straight answers, no shortcuts. Even if all the mice are alive tomorrow, it still doesn't mean the stuff's safe to use on people. But it would be a big step forward. And that's the lot, eh? Oh, what a morning. Noses, throats, bedwetting. And that's this fellow with the itch. I don't know how Dr. Dean takes it. Anyway, I bet you never got through it as fast as we did this morning. Perhaps Dr. Dean is interested in curing her patients. What do you want? My headaches. Well, you should have come at half past nine. It's nearly one o'clock now. I can only come at my lunch hour. I want to see Doctor, please. Wait one moment. I'll see if I can fix it for you. Sit down over there, will you? Oh, Doctor, there's another patient just come in for you. Look, I can't see her now. Tell her to come back some other time. Well, she doesn't look at all well. She says she has a pain in the head. You. It's my head. Is anybody looking after you? Yes, I think so. Uh, Sister Gator. Excuse me a moment. Look, uh, can't you do something with this girl? Give her a couple of aspirin and send her home. I don't like the look of her, Dr. Groom. I think somebody ought to see her now. Oh, all right. The doctor will see you in a moment. Thank you. A little wider, please. Yeah, you've had earache, eh? That's right. I was sick this morning. Hmm. Now you pull yourself together. There's nothing much wrong with you. Nurse? Yes, Doctor. I want you to put some drops in that ear. And then I'm going to order some pills for the headache, and she's to go home, right? Will you write it up, sir? Yes, I'll sign it, and you fill in the details. Put, um, slight tonsillitis. Now you're going to be as right as rain in the morning. Thank you ever so, Doctor. Yeah. There's nothing much wrong with that girl. Well, I'm sure I hope not, Doctor. Slight tonsillitis, that's all. I'll just put some drops in your ear, and then you can go and get your medicine from the dispensary. Thank you, sister. So long, everybody. Oh, Sophie, it's all right about the theatre this afternoon? I'll cope. Oh, thanks, I'll go. Can't stop now, I'm late already. Have a nice time. So long. If only you would be so enthusiastic with those patients. Well, I suppose I'd better get those plates. Mr. Groom will want to see them in the theatre. Which case is he taking first? Peddler, before he changes his mind again. It will be a long one, and I hope not in vain. Sister, will it, will it be a long operation? Dear me, no. Mr. Groom never takes long over his cases. He'll be back in the ward by tea time. And when you wake up, it'll all be behind you. I thought the missus would be here by now. Uh, they promised she'd come. She'll be along now. Don't you start and worry. 
That, that clock aids fast, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes, maybe it is. I'll have to speak to the engineers about that. Nurse, here's somebody who comes from your part of the world, don't you, Nurse? Well, I come from Middle Park, Cherry Tree Farm. Cherry Tree Farm? Well, well, you must be Mr. Shepherd's daughter. Yes, that's right. I worked for him before you was born, miss. Did you? Ah, that's good land, that is. Now, I'd give anything to be ploughing it now. Yes, it'll be lambing time soon. It's a busy time for you, isn't it? Ah, it is, miss. Oh, I hope so. Hello, Tranta. Hello, miss. Mr. Groom arrived? Not yet, miss. It was very nice of you giving my daughter that album. Can't you play all the pieces in it yet? Not to everybody's taste, perhaps, but we like it all right. She's took to that Brahms thing. Lullaby, I think it is. Yes, that's a pretty one. I used to really go to town on that myself. Well, there must be something in it, because we get up in the morning with it, we eat with it, and we go to bed with it. She <laughs> likes that little number, all right. Well, as soon as she can play all the pieces in that album, I've got plenty more for her. Thank you ever so much, miss. Hello, what's the matter? What are you doing here? Sister? Yes, Dr. Dean. What's this girl doing here? She looks very ill. She's gone home, Doctor. Dr. Groom told her to go. Well, I don't like interfering in Dr. Groom's cases, but I really think I shall have to take a look at her. I, I can only come at my lunch now. Where's Dr. Dean? She was here a minute ago, sir. We'll find her. I'll hang up my coat. One of our bad days. Sorry, sister. I've only just had lunch. Take her shoes off. She's pretty bad. Thought she looked ill, doctor. All right, sister. Leave her there for a moment, will you? Not there. Thank you. You're late. I'm sorry, sir. I've been seeing an emergency in casualty. It's time we were in the theatre. I've asked them to keep the case for you. I thought it would be less trouble if you saw the girl here before we go upstairs. I don't like keeping the theatre waiting. What is it? I think it's a cerebral abscess. I hope you're wrong. Well, come on, don't let's hang about. Let's go and look at the girl. Headache, vomiting, slow pulse. Hmm, I'm afraid you're right. She'll have to come up for a decompression. If only the girl had come in earlier, something could have been done about it. When did you first see her? She came in... That is about half an hour ago, well, sir. Make up your mind, can't you? Was that the first time you saw her? Yes, Mr. Crow. I distinctly remember being told that her temperature was subnormal this morning. What is all this about? Somebody saw her this morning. Who was it? Your son saw her this morning. He was in a hurry to look at a house. He wanted to send her away, but we persuaded him to have a look at her. Well, why has she been kept hanging about all this time? Why didn't you get her into the ward? Dr. Groom didn't think there was anything wrong with her. He told her to go home. Here are the case papers. Let's get on, can't we? We're 20 minutes late already. Now, I suppose you're satisfied. Somebody had to tell him. We couldn't all stand like deaf mutes. You made the most of your chance. You needn't have been so brutal. That man's a fine surgeon. Time we knew about his son, anyway. Well, I don't like young Dr. Groom myself. He's finished as far as this hospital's concerned. That is, unless his father can do anything to help him. It's his fault, not mine. I'm going to matron. I'm going to resign. I think it's the best thing you can do.
cup of tea, Mrs. Pedler? Oh, thank you, miss. I ought to have been here when they came for him. I know how he frets. Well, he was asleep when he went to the theatre. Anyway, he'll be down soon. Nurse. Yes? Are they operating on him now? Yes, but don't worry, Mrs. Pedler. It won't be long. Thank you, miss. Hopeless. I can't do anything with a case like this. It's too far gone. There is a growth, all right. Pretty high up, isn't it? High up? Of course it's high up. It's halfway up his windpipe. Well, what are you hanging about for? Stitch up, stitch up. Let's get on to the next case. I think I can just get above it, sir. Very well. We can try a resection, I suppose. Knife, sister. Dr. Dean, take over, will you? Come on, you can't do it from that side. You're not left-handed, are you? Doing fine. Knife pieces. Well, Pedro will do. But I'll be glad when this absent case is through. Messy business. I'm not satisfied with the way this girl's been treated. She's been badgered about from one person to another. Kept sitting around in outpatients. Looked over in a hurry and packed off home with a bottle of eardrops. And all the time she's surgical emergency. This gets out. People lose confidence in young. Who can blame them? Negligence. I don't expect it was this clear when your son saw it. The boy shouldn't have missed it. Gross carelessness, that's what I can't forgive. Anybody might have missed it, sir. You didn't miss it, Dr. Dean. Sister, what's the point in giving me old gloves? They were a new pair today, Mr. Groom. I put them out myself. It's ready. Sister, lotion nurse. Mm -hmm. 
Hello, Mrs. Springs. This won't take long. If anything happens to him, Doctor, I, I'll never forgive myself. Well, I won't pretend that Tommy isn't very ill, but that he should have one of those rare infections that won't respond to penicillin isn't your fault. You can't blame yourself for that. I, I have to ask you to wait outside for a moment. Size people. That's right. Mine must be a pretty big one. Yes, it is rather. You punctured me again. Yeah, oh, he spot that one, does. Will you hold him for me? Yes, sir. We're going fishing. We had a real lot. Might have caught anything. Did you prick yourself, sir? Yes. I hope it didn't hurt. Don't know, yes. It's too early to say. Well, you're quite right about that young woman. Good job it wasn't left any longer. Are you satisfied with her, sir? I think she'll do. Thank God. What is the matter? You only pretend to read that book. I'm sorry if I'm disturbing you, Mac. It's a peddler's operation this afternoon, isn't it? Yes, I suppose it is. I keep wondering if we got a complete removal of that growth. You cannot yet expect the mental detachment of an experienced surgeon. Yet without it, of course, we would none of us have the courage to go on in this profession. But you must learn as soon as you can not to look back on what is done and, so far as you are concerned, finished. If the man lives, he lives. If he dies, he dies. That is not your concern, because what you did was well done. Your job is finished. So peddler's life is no longer in your hands. Hasn't my son come back yet? No, he has not. Mr. Groom, this affair of the cerebral abscess could do a lot of harm to the hospital. So I cannot even rely on your discretion, Doctor. Well, that isn't fair. It's not her fault if the nurses chatter. This is all very distressing. But I think it's shocking that the doctor should play with the lives of poor people, Mr. Groom. I'm quite aware of that. I think your son's just arrived, Mr. Groom. Dr. Dean, I owe you an apology. I'm sorry, my dear. Mac Cusack, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave me alone with my son. Certainly. <clears throat> Thank you so much for this afternoon, sir. If we do the same for you someday. Hello, Mac. Hope my indispensable services have been missed this afternoon. No, but they will be. Hello, Dad. What are you doing here at this time of night? I thought you were meeting old Brewster at the club. I've had a stinking afternoon. This painter's house by two days. And who do you think got it? Neil Mariner. May interest you to know that while you were gallivanting around this afternoon, I had to operate on one of your outpatients for a cerebral abscess. What? A cerebral abscess? I swear I never saw a cerebral abscess this morning. No, you didn't. But Sophie Dean did as soon as you'd gone rushing off. I say, you don't mean that case that Dolly and um, Nurse Clark brought in at lunchtime, do you? The girl with the bad ear? That's exactly what I mean. I say, how awful. Yes. Still, she'll be all right, won't she? I mean, you have operated. You young fool, is that all you have to say for yourself? Don't you realize what this means to the good name of Yeomans? Can't you see that it's going to cost you your job? Yes, but Dad, it's a mistake anyone might make. Couldn't it be hushed up? Hushed up! If that girl dies, you'll have her on your conscience all your life. Yes, but if she lives, it'll be a wretched existence, won't it? I mean, she might turn mental or something. Mental? There's no reason why a burst mastoid should turn into a mental case if it's caught in time. You call yourself a surgeon. 
We are doctors, not judges. Our job is to save lives, not decide whether they're worth saving. That girl may be a number in a hospital to you, but she was someone's proudest creation. That's why our job is different. A death on the table, an overdose of morphia, a misdiagnosis, and you extinguish a flame that can never be relit. Do you think she will die? I don't know. She would have if I hadn't operated this afternoon. I'm sorry, Dick. I can forgive you a great deal. But I cannot forgive you for skimping your job. That's why I could no longer support your application for surgical registrar. If you've learnt your lesson, this may be the makings of you as a doctor. But in this hospital, you're finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, don't go, Shoesmith. I've had a bad day, Shoesmith. I understand you're backing Sophie Dean's application for surgical registrar when Macuzek goes. Certainly I'm backing her. So am I. Oh, haven't you finished yet? It's ours since breakfast. Well, it isn't my fault if Carter breaks everything. Sister's frightened she'll end up by breaking the health service as well. Ah, that's why I saw her on bed, Pan Alley. Serves her right. Teach her to be more careful. You know, Carter's not as dumb as you'd think. She's gone out of the washing up, and now she's gone out of helping with Burgess's dressing. Have you seen his face? Well, I wouldn't call it a face myself. Shepard, sister wants you. Come on. Crafty. Two pins I'd try an injection on my latest batch. After all, we know it kills the bug. You can't, Neil. You know if you inject this boy with a drug that hasn't been approved and he dies, you'll stand trial. You'll be up for manslaughter. Could try it on myself. Oh, don't be a fool. If you died, you'd not only be throwing away your own life, but a chance of saving hundreds. Hello, Mr. Burgess. Hello, nurse. Sister told me to get you ready. Well, she's not going to undo them again, is she? Might have a chance if only they'd leave me alone. Does it hurt very much? <laughs> yes, it does, rather. What do you think I look like under these bandages? I don't know. <laughs> what would you like me to look like? I hadn't thought about it. Oh, that's a blow. I was hoping you had. Morning, Mr. Burgess. Morning, sister. Don't run away, nurse. I'm going to need your help. And I have a towel, please. But they were only done yesterday, sister. The thing might have a chance to heal if only you'd leave me alone. Mm, it might. And it might go septic too, mightn't it? <laughs> You're a holy terror, sister. You've got an answer for everything. You know, this is the worst part of the day. Well, come on, let's get it over. Scissors, please. And forceps. It's all right. There's another one there. Give me, give me another one. Thank you. Now, would you adjust my mask for? Put your own on and then come round and steady his head for me. Got the jitters. <laughs> now then, what's all this about? I can't help it, really. Can't. Here, I'll use mine. Tell me all about it. I can't go on. It's all so awful. I didn't think it would be like this. Little boy, he's going to 
going to die. And that man in the corner, Miller said he hasn't got a face. Oh, she's no right to say that. Anyway, you don't believe all the gossip you hear, do you? I know this hospital life is pretty frightening at first, but if you're ever going to be a nurse, Joan, you've got to hide your feelings. You've got to grow a crust. We've all got to. There's something you can do for that young man. Yes. He was an engineer working on an airfield. A plane crashed on takeoff. And he ran forward and pulled the pilot out. It was as brave a thing as a man could do. Now he's frightened. Terribly frightened of what he's going to look like. And if you show that you're frightened when it's time for his dressings, it's not going to help him. Is it? Why don't you go straight back now and show him that you don't mind at all? That you think he's just like anyone else. That's going to help him tremendously. I don't think I could. You'll be surprised what you can do. Go. Try. You'll do more for that young man than you'll ever know. Right, I'll try. Yes, I could go. Sister. Oh, there you are, nurse. I want a wet swab, please. Yes, sister. Poor kid. I don't envy you. Still, I hand it to you. You've got guts. Now, this is not going to hurt nearly so much as it did yesterday. It gets easier all the time. I'm going to have to soak it off, and it'll maybe hurt just a wee bit. Now, you'll have to keep very still. Nurse will help you. Go behind him and put your hands at the back of his head. Nicely. That's it. We're doing fine. Well, there it is, Sophie. That's about the size of it. I never thought old groom had it in him. So if you want to get your foot in here, you better sit down, write out your testimonials. Well, what's wrong? I'm not putting in for it, sir. What? I thought you made up your mind. Surgery is your game. You've told me so time and time again. Well, you'll never get anywhere, young woman, till you decide which way you're heading. Please, I want your advice. I've been offered a job by my old hospital. It's to be assistant to McKendrick. It would be a really big thing for me, sir. So that's it, is it? You find yeoman's a poor sort of place. A dirty, old-fashioned hospital. Do you think I ought to make the move? Oh, don't put the responsibility on me, young woman. Set my heart on keeping you. You had a chance here, you know, a pretty good chance. We're not so far behind the times as you young folk like to think. But now that you've got this London notion into your head, you'll never be satisfied with this place. Well, I must get along and talk to my nurses. By the way, does Neil know that you want to go? Yes, but he doesn't know I've been accepted yet. Ah. accepted for that London job. Oh. If that's what you want, I'm glad. So it didn't work? No. It's better than the previous batch, but we can't use it on the boy, possibly. But, Sophie, I've infected myself. You've done what? It was an accident while I was taking a sample from the boy. I swabbed it with spirit. There was nothing more I could do. There's no point in telling you as long as there was a chance of throwing it off. Now, 
bit different. Oh, my darling, what have you done to yourself? Become my own guinea pig. What could be fairer than that? Sophie, I may be able to resist this, but if I can't, if I get in a condition like that, boy, I want you to use less. Neil, that's impossible. It may seem impossible now, but I think you'll get used to the idea. Try two cc's every four hours. And Sophie, learn something from it. Whatever happens, you can learn from the way I react. Number two cc's. This may advance the research work. Hello, Jenna Ward. Is Dr. Shoesmith there? An emergency? Nurse Miller, get a drip set from Jenna as quick as you can, please. Dr. Dean has an emergency. It's Dr. Mariner. Dr. Mariner? Never mind who it is. Get a move on, girl. Simon Ward, I want Dr. Shoesmith. In return, do you say? Lister, Private Ward 15, quick. I say, have you a drip set? Sister Abbott wants one. Yes, you'll find one in the cupboard outside. You'll never guess who it's for. It's Dr. Mariner. What's the matter with him? Dr. Dean turned him down, or what? <laughs> Oh, Neil, what have you been up to? He's infected himself with Tommy's bug. He did it when he was getting a blood sample. By the way, my count's pretty low. we better start a transfusion right away. I'm group A-R-H positive. Yes, it's coming. Hmm. Well, that's about all we can do. We know that penicillin's about as much good against this bug as Chenopod's, but... Tom. Yes? We should be into the crisis in a few hours. What with one thing or another, my chances are rather less than 50-50. If things look bad, I've told Sophie what to do. And what's that, may I ask? Try my dope. It's batch 703. Sophie knows where it is. Two cc's every four hours. It's preposterous, Neil. You have no toxicity test. You, you, you have no clinical trial. It's just suicide. Try that oxygen again, Sister Lydia. the mask, it's exhausting him. I should take it off. I have a good mind to go and get that stuff of his. Sophie, I don't want to hear any more about that. We can't even consider it. Excuse me. Sister, will you come, please? It's Tommy Briggs. Watch him, will you, sister?
done and it's, it's Syringe is down. Sophie, I can't permit this. You're taking this man's life into your hands. And if I don't, he's going to die. That's not for us to decide. We're doctors, not God. We've done everything we can. Everything medically possible. If you give him that injection and he dies, you'll have to face a jury. That's what I told him. in the same with thy mighty power, and grant this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hey, sister. Mr. Pedler, what on earth? There can't be much wrong with you deafening us all like that. Now, what do you want? Uh, I want so something to drink. All you men worry about is your smokes and your pints of beer. Oh, beer. Well, don't go giving yourself ideas simply because you feel a wee bit better today. I'll bring you a few sips of water. Oh, thank you, sister. I frightened you yesterday, didn't I? Your hands were as cold as ice and you were shaking all over. Yes, I was a little bit frightened, Mr. Burgess. It seems so silly now. What kind of face have I got, nurse? What am I going to look like when they finish with me? Well, I... I see. It's as bad as that, eh? Oh, no, you're going to look all right. I was frightened because I'd never seen a surgical dressing before. I began imagining things. Then I did look. And after that, I wasn't frightened anymore. Honestly? Yes. I didn't think you'd have brown eyes. <laughs> I wish I could tell the color of yours. What are they? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to wait until you can see for yourself. I must go now. Sister wants me. Now, you won't go on worrying, will you? No, no, I won't. You'll be back soon, won't you? Yes, I'll be helping when your dressings are changed this afternoon. So I'll see you then anyway. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Take to work. Four hours. I've got all the notes. 
But don't worry about that now. The only thing that matters is that it really works. Yes, in one case. I was lucky I might have been one of the three dead mice. This has been the longest night in my life. I've still got to write to McKendrick. McKendrick? Yes. To tell him that I'm going to stay here. Sorry to disturb you, Doctor. Awfully pleased you're feeling better, sir. I know you want your rest, but there's a casualty come in. Oh, very well, sister. Oh, sister. Don't stand any nonsense from you. <laughs> As if I would. Thank you. 